welcome back to the course on big data analytics where we are trying to discuss the computer aided decision support systems using big data analytics i will discuss big data analytics tools and software in this lecture and i will also like to talk about how are these connected to the different life cycle phases that we have discussed there are multiple technologies maybe tens of technologies which are available nowadays but few of them are very prominent or names i have already suggested in the previous lectures or studio tableau or so i will try to discuss a few of them and i will also try to discuss some of the popular of them so big data platforms or software which are used in a life cycle there are multiple software which are used so the use of the software is to majorly extract the information extract the data i will put information sometime it is data if the data is in a structured form and is some meaningful understanding could be taken from it in the initial phase itself that is why it is called information so we extract the information and also extract the data these are the major thing then it processes the data sets when it is a processes data sets it could be a large number of them major things that we have discussed it performs extract transform load or extract load transform combined it does what extract transform load transform well, let us have a quick look on the life cycle phases that we discussed in the previous lectures so here in the phase 1 when the discovery of the data has to be there discovery of the data is discovery of the program of the life cycle when we say discovery we are trying to only say what is our statement what are the hypothesis that we could define those could also be put in a formal matter we can use a general google document or we can use uh, maybe microsoft word or so to draft them but to prepare the data the softwares which are required where we try to set the data set inventory we try to develop tables on them so majorly i would say hadoop we we'll discuss about hadoop it can perform massively parallel ingestion of the data and also parallel processing including if the web traffic is very heavy so gps location analysis genomic analysis combining of massive unstructured data feeds or so it can do multiple things also in data preparation we use alpine miner data preparation means we need to mine the data data mining is always major step or major part of it so a software alpha miner what does it provide it provides the major good gui graphic user interface so that the person who is trying to ingest or use the data is able to use that in a very easy manner so it includes workflows analytical workflows it includes various data manipulators and it includes uh, various uh, uh, series of analytical events such as uh, stage data mining techniques like for in investing maybe uh, first 10 customers who, who have come then to have descriptive statistics or clustering of the system so in sql or other big data sources so this could also be developed other than that we have open refine because it is open now the world is open also it is known as google refine google refine google is providing its services in the data mining uh, practices itself so in google refine what we have is a free an open source powerful tool so which also helps us to work with messy data because it is google so google has an excellent user interface gui as i have said graphic user interface so by user interface i say what is uh, an example could be Mm, what are the number of minimum clicks person has to do to get to the login page login should be highlighted or to search something what are the number of steps the person has to go through when searching the keywords or so so it is open refine google provides an excellent gui and uh, it is uh, again a performing data transformation tool 
So, again we have one more here data wrangler. Data wrangler is an interactive tool for cleansing the data, transformation of the data. It was developed by Stanford University and it can uh, perform many transformations on the given data set. For example, the data transformation tool put puts can be put into the Java or Python, they are the languages that generally data scientists learn in the in their initial or in the early stages of their career or so. Advantage of this feature or the data wrangler software is that a subset of data can be manipulated in wrangler via its GUI and the same operations can be written out as a Java or Python code. So, the code is generated by itself, it generates code. So, multiple other softwares are there that I will discuss in the coming slides. If I talk about the model planning phase, majorly when R programming as an open source software R or R studio, this was majorly used by many of the applicants. For instance, the big companies like maybe GINA that I will take it as a case study also use this. So, R contains nearly more than 5000 or more packages of the detailed data analysis and graphical representation. It is also a studio, R studio is a tool that helps in data visualization. So, it's such as we train, we instruct, we try to employ the best practices. So, as well as packaging it in a such a way that it is easy to use and more robust in a way. The phenomena is what happened in the Linux in 1980s or 90s. So, R is also trying to use the similar kind of the platform. So, Linux was easy to employ in those times. Now, people are using R everywhere R is in demand. Other than that, we cannot miss SQL analysis and services which can perform a, a very basic uh, uh, database analytics of uh, maybe common data mining of functions involving aggregations. So, basic predictive models. So, this SQL analysis service I would say analysis. services. Then SAS and access. So, SAS provides integration between the SAS and the analytics sandbox via multiple data connectors. It itself generally is used for file extracts, but uh, SAS access users can connect to the relational databases such as it can connect to Oracle. right then it can connect to teradata and many data warehouse appliances such as uh, maybe green plum is one of them the enterprise applications such as sap on salesforce or so so these are used for majorly for model planning when we have not built the model but we were only planning for it so here these kinds of the softwares are majorly used now when we are building the model, I would just list uh, a few of them which are more used here. R definitely for building the model itself helps us a lot. So, these are open source software. I would say open source one is R or uh, R studio again. So, then we have uh, Octave. Octave is also a free programming software language for computational modeling. It has uh, some functionality of MATLAB as well, but MATLAB is a licensed software, Octave is a free version. So, that is freely available. So, major universities teaching use this to have learning in machine learning. So, then here we have Veka, W E K A. It is a free data mining software package with analytic workbench. The functions created in Veka can be executed in a Java code. So, I will put here a data wrangler as well that code that could be generated was Java or Python. Then anyway Python can directly be used as well in the model building. It is a programming language that has multiple tool kits, it helps or is used in machine learning and analysis. So, such as uh, various kits are there which uh, help in uh, data visualization. 
so matplotlib library is also used here so anyway sql can also be used these are the open source software now we have some license software licensed means when we have to purchase them in those we have sas sas enterprise miner which permits the users to run the predictive or descriptive analytics which are based upon the big volumes of the data across the enterprise it try to interpolate and extrapolate the other data stores and has many partnerships and is built for the enterprise level computing and analytics then spss spss is provided by ipm ibm spss modeler so it offers to explain and analyze through the gui spss is used for the design of experiments it is used for conducting various analytics tests such as very simple t test or analysis of variance or maybe multiple analysis of variance analysis of covariance so we can have cluster analysis there we can build factors factor analysis could also be conducted spss is widely used by the students in management students in data science next comes matlab matlab is a one of the most widely used softwares so which helps in data analytics algorithms data exploration matlab has multiple toolboxes within itself it it can be worked upon the financial analysis it can be worked upon uh, the predictive analytics maybe in forecasting then it has mathematical toolbox in it so multiple work boxes or toolboxes are available so statistics and machine learning toolbox is one then we have control system toolbox then cow footing is also there mapping or signal processing then deep learning then data field toolbox image processing financial predictive maintenance toolbox so multiple toolboxes are there in the matlab one cannot learn all the toolboxes definitely if one of the toolboxes maybe the person who is in finance is trying to have the basic information of the financial flows or so so can use the financial toolbox to ingest the data to get the data output out then to visualize simple moving averages out of the data then create a, maybe a candle plot or customized uh, data axis then maybe plot uh, an indicator systems or so so this could also could be used in image processing it is very important image processing detect the measure of the circular objects in an object maybe or maybe a similar kind of objects in an image so image processing is widely used in metallurgy in face recognition in recognition of the faults or maybe the truth or lying software for example in us immigration services they use a model uh, or um, a software that they have called avatar a v a t a r in which they try to have a digital model of the person and based upon the person the way person is speaking the kind of pauses person is having the kind of the expressions of the uh, person's face it tries to identify whether the person is lying or is it all flow uh, then this also helps them to determine whether the person is a uh, suspected maybe to do some illegal activity in the airport or so us immigration services use this kind of the setups in image processing as well in matlab multiple tools could be used so then we have alpine miner it provides an excellent gui front end for users to develop analytic workshops and interact with big data tools and platforms at the back end yes one of this another software is statistica statistica and also with it is mathematica So these are also well used and popular softwares for data mining and used in analytics. Next, I have a list of the softwares which are common or which are widely used. Some of them are very mature technologies. For instance, Hadoop is very mature, is widely used. R Studio is very widely used. I have not listed SPSS or SAS here, but majorly which are majorly used for the big data analytics. and known for its work is so those are being listed here tableau is very widely used a few of them are rising technologies only but they are expected to be great technologies in the recent future 
So, let me try to start discuss all these 20 technologies, the features of them and where are they used. Apache Hadoop is the first that I will try to discuss. So, as I said Hadoop is one of the most mature softwares, it is called as one of the best big data tools available. When the people say Hadoop, the word Hadoop itself is now synonymous with the big data analytics. So, it is used by the big business tycoons such as Facebook. Right, then we have LinkedIn, IBM who were the initial users of this system, Microsoft and many more business technologies. Hadoop is a low cost system, it is tolerant and highly available framework that is capable of handling data of all shapes and sizes. Haroop is the most recent stable version that is Haroop 3.1.3. So, this version is the most recent one. So, it was created in Java. Created in Java. I am just putting down the features of this. It was created by Apache Software Foundations only that is why it is called Apache Hadoop. So, this is an open source software framework for storing and handling big data. So, major attributes of Apache Hadoop system if I would say features of them it is fault tolerant and scalable. Tolerant, fault tolerant that means if the fault is there, the mistakes which are not tolerable, which should be tolerable, the source software should be flexible and should be sensitive accordingly. So, it can be designed in such a way. Then scalable means that uh, analytic sandbox that we have developed, it can be doubled in size, it can be put to the multiple times of its size or it can also be reduced later. So, it is flexible, so that is why it is widely used. Uh, this is one. Second, this framework is made to function even in unfavorable circumstances such as in machine crash. Right. Now, the framework makes Hadoop economical by storing the data across the commodity hardware. Hadoop uses a distributed system to store and process data. Right, to store and process data. So, data processing is fast and the results are fast because parallel processing of the data happens. Parallel processing and extracting of data is possible. Apache did not stop with Hadoop as and when the things, things kept on coming up, it also developed the software known as Apache Spark. It was created with the intention of accelerating the Hadoop big data processing only. Accelerate the Hadoop system. How? The main goal of Apache Spark project was to improve upon the distributed, scalable, fault tolerant processing framework of MapReduce while maintaining its benefits. So, it was built upon MapReduce, right, and putting in the same functions like fault 
tolerance then distribution distribution when I say the distributed system and scalability while retaining the basic function what map produce was already doing. So, it offers the ability for in memory computing to deliver speed. So, Spark offers high level APIs. I put the features, it offers high level APIs. API is application programming interface. So, it offers the APIs such as Java, Scala, Python, R and so. So, in Hadoop structures or in Hadoop uh, cluster itself, Spark can run applications 100 times faster. I would say 100 times faster in Hadoop clusters. So, due to its ability to work with various data stores including OpenStack, HDFS or Cassandra, Apache Spark offers greater flexibility than Hadoop. greater flexibility because it can uh, work with various data stores including OpenStack, HDFS, Cassandra or so. So, it has a dynamic collection of the machine algorithms. Right, which includes clustering, collaborating, filtering, classification, regression. So, these are offered by the MLib found in Spark M library MLib. It can be used as a standalone on Hadoop or Apache Mesos or various other softwares or it can be used with cloud. So, both standalone that is on your computer and cloud versions are available. Now comes another software that is MongoDB. Mongo database it was created in 2009 and is widely nowadays also used by Facebook, eBay, MetLife, Google and many other systems like these. So, because it is a no SQL database with an easy setup environment and it was written in C++, C or Java. C, C++ and Java right or JavaScript. So, this open source data analysis program MongoDB is one of the most light databases for big data that is why is it so because it makes it easier to manage frequently changing data as well as unstructured or semi structured data. So, the velocity that is the data that is coming quickly and veracity these features of big data are quite well handled by Mongo database. So, it is the features if I say is both economical and dependable 
right it has a strong query language because it is no sql based database it is strong query language that supports graph search text search geometry based search aggregation or so so ad hoc queries such as indexing sharding replication those are also supported then it possesses all the capabilities of relational database are well created in this so it is as i said being used already by the big business tycoons here another important software that i would like to discuss is apache cassandra so it is distributed open source no sql or not just sql so both of them are or were being used in apache cassandra so it offers high availability and scalability without sacrificing the performance effectiveness so it is one of the most powerful big data tools it can handle again both structured and unstructured data in order to communicate with database it uses cassandra structure language so it cassandra's linear scalability and fault tolerance on and low cost hardware or cloud infrastructure makes it an ideal platform for mission critical data so i would say mission critical data mission critical data or the data that is required for the specific target so that is very well handled in cassandra so cassandra is also being used by big companies like instagram netflix i also discussed about this as an example in the previous lectures then github go daddy ebay hulu etc so cassandra is a decentralized architecture that prevents a cluster from having a single point of failure so it has decentralized architecture that is prevents failure from a single point but decentralized if i say if one of the data points in the cluster is even outlier or if something is that is unwanted or so that will try to affect the whole cluster itself if that is removed whole cluster sometimes in the centralized system is not uh, kept meaningful or so for instance if the class uh, heights of the students in the class is one of the data set that we are creating and there is one person who is maybe 6 feet 10 inches tall so this tries to hamper my overall system overall cluster that i am creating it will be trying to skew it towards the left now decentralized architecture means the single database can be taken off and it can be rebuilt so it is a decentralized architecture that prevents a sale failure from a single point so that is why cassandra is widely used because it is again the flexibility feature is widely or very prominent in this so it is again extremely durable and fault tolerant definitely we have to define the boundaries that what are the faults or what are the systems that it could accept it can help in try to identify that then with large number of nodes cassandra performance can increase linearly 
I would say large number of nodes can provide linear expansion. In actual applications, it performs better than a well uh, liked uh, no SQL substitutes or so. So, Cassandra is widely used by big programmers or big companies to prepare the data majorly. To prepare the data means how to store the data, the data that could be extracted, the sandbox, when analytics, analytics sandbox is built. So, what kinds of tools are to be used there that is put here, if it's Cassandra is one of the tools selected. So, tend to extract the data whether it is in a structured or in unstructured form that can be taken off. If we even take few data points or outliers out of uh, the study or so, Cassandra tool still allows you to perform while doing processing itself. So, with this I will just look to have a break and I will continue the different technologies of the platforms of the software which are there in big data analytics in the next lecture. Thank you.